Welcome to the Miniature Papers. Today we're going to talk about dynamic poses when it comes to feet uh, doing crisis battle suits and other kind of towel projects. Now, speaking of towel projects, as far as my get it done challenge, uh, I am working on this Battle Force box right here. I just finished the Battle Force box, a different one, and I have one more Battle Force box and an Apocalypse box to get done, to be done with my Tau, which is really, really exciting. I'll have a fully uh, feelable force with options uh, when it comes to my Tau force, and I'm getting it all done. So let's get into dynamic posing uh, when it comes to creating these uh, crisis battle suits and some of the other figures in the Tau line. Now, quite frankly, some of the Tau line feet are, well, I found difficult to seat in and position the way I wanted to. I have do, come up with a method as I was uh, painting up these crisis battle suits, and this is just a uh, sub assembly that I have right here. Um, and I wanted his foot to be a little bit off the ground, you know, just just the back of it, just kind of lifting up as if it were walking, making more of a dynamic kind of pose that is actually articulating something and communicating that there is motion in the miniature. Now, you could paint miniatures and they look great. You add contrast and everything else. Uh, but when you start adding movement to a static pose, you know, kind of movement tells more of a story and adds more interest in your model. So positioning the feet um, can help, especially if you have many of the same units and you want each one to be its own delicate flower. Um, this will definitely help you in that aspect. Um, so here I have a dramatic pose, uh, a little more dramatic pose or dynamic pose because it's like lifting up the leg. And now I have two more uh, that I did as well. This one's also lifting up a different leg, uh, a little more of an arch, an angle, uh, knees forward, uh, and doing that as well. And one of the things that you could have to do if you want to make these dynamic poses is uh, there's this little knob on the inside of the hip joint that you're gonna have to snip, right? And once you snip that uh, off, you can rotate the uh, hip joint in any angle you want, which can be very tricky. It just can, because now, you know, you'd have no, no control, um, unless you add control. I'm going to show you how to do that today. So, uh, here's another one, uh, that I did, uh, with that as well. And this one is even more, uh, it's not running. He, he's just literally on one foot and, uh, going that. I know these things look kind of look like chickens because of the big feet. Uh, but, uh, trust me, it, there's more bulkier stuff that goes on here to fill this out. This is simply one of many sub assemblies that I have. Uh, when I do sub assemblies, I, I take a box, I take the entire box. Like for this instance, I did the, um, I did the entire battle force box and I sub assembled and I try to assemble as much as I possibly could. Uh, but I want the process of me painting it to be quick and easy. And I don't want like my, my brush to get in the way of, of little small bits or something like that. So uh, I assemble as much as I possibly can and always thinking ahead, uh, saying, wait, well, when I paint this, how quickly can I paint this? Will be any obstructions? And, you know, as I'm painting it and completing like one sub assembly and I paint this whole thing, I'll, I'll build it, you know, and then I'll put another piece and, and paint that and then, then build that. And then and it's, it's thoroughly satisfying for me. Anywho, uh, let's get back to these uh, dynamic poses and how you can do them or how I did them and you could uh, replicate some kind of things uh, to uh, so you could do that itself. So let's get down to the tutorial. Uh, let's get down to that table town. Alrighty, so here is the dynamic pose uh, before I actually primed everything and you know all the mold lines are taken off and scraped and all that good stuff right there. You see that dynamic pose is interesting. Now one of the tricks that uh that prevented me from doing these kind of poses earlier is that uh, the base, the bottom there was unstable. Okay, so here I have uh, some poster tack and I'll show you which poster tack I use, this Loctite Fun Tack. I love that stuff uh, and I buy them in bulk. All right, so I am going to put that down 
and use that. And a lot of people use reuse this, and I do reuse it. Uh, but when you are painting with oil paints, and sometimes I do, and you have that stuck onto a pill bottle, it becomes really unusable and more like gum sticking, hot gum sticking on the bottom of your feet on, on a sidewalk or something. It's like it just ends up really nasty. So, you know, I just throw that away, and I have a lot of fun tack. Okay, okay, so putting the fun tack down onto a cutting board. Uh, I like the Ulfa cutting board, but you can use quite any cutting board you want. All right. You get an idea of where you want the foot. Now, these things are squiggly. They, they go all around, you know, They and it's hard to place. But putting that poster tack down onto your cutting board stabilizes them. And then you can position the entire piece how you want it, how it's going to look. You can rotate it. You can do a lot of stuff. It gives you a lot more control. Now, try not to be too heavy handed. We're not like slamming it down. It'd still be delicate. You are dealing with miniatures. Uh, here I have my Loctite glue, which I've liberated from the Loctite glue container. I can do a video about that, but Vince Venturella did a video about that, uh, and I learned from him, and I thought it was amazing. Uh, if you want me to do a video about that, please leave a comment below, and I'll make a video about how, I, how to liberate your Loctite glue if you're using Loctite glue. All right, so now once it's in position, you're going to have to wait for it to dry. Now, it does take a little bit of while there, but once it's done, oh, now you have that kind of thing going on right there, which makes it easy. Now, you notice that I am only putting down one piece of poster tack um, to hold on to both legs because one of the other legs, the, the feet are going to be a little bit dangling or a different position, so it's not going to be flat. So I'm not going to put poster tack on the other side. So what I'm going to do here after it uh, dried is I'm going to fill up the cavity with that. That really definitely helps with crisis battle suits or anytime you're putting on towel legs for some of their drones, for their, some of their, um, their mechs. And um, using a tweezers here definitely help you to get its position. However, you do have to put your hand in there, and I'm sorry I get the hand in the way, and I have to wait till it dries. Um, so basically, I'm just supporting it in the back and in the front. I'm just uh, holding it in place until it dries sufficiently, and then I can uh, get back and continue on to you know the next one and then the next one so there it is the dynamic pose right there um it's pretty cool i am actually going to um, take the camera off of its uh brace or stand and i'm going to put it so you can see it a little bit better uh on my high desk and you see my ocd in the background because i have the crisis battle suit weapons like loaded out and laid out perfectly in their squares but <laughs> That's me. All right, so here it is. Uh, there are dynamic poses. One way you can do that as well, just to support it, because I thought this was a pain when I was putting it together. The first time I did it, I got glue all over the place. I'm like, oh, this was so frustrating. So now that I found this methodology to do that, and it's very simple to do, it has helped me dramatically create some really dramatic poses. Okay, so let me get back into the main. All right, so yeah. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And thank you, Patreon members, um, Mike McBoom and, Boom and uh, Emily Sesco. Thank you so much for your support. And I continually am internally grateful uh, for that. I do have a Patreon page. I do do shout outs. And you, if you think what I do is worthy, you can get onto that Patreon page. And I would wholly appreciate it. All the money that I get from that gets poured back into the channel. 100% gets poured back into the channel for the quality of the videos that you see here. All right. So uh, that being said, I really wanted to share that. And I was pretty excited about sharing that tip with you uh, because I was so frustrated. Like literally I had glue everywhere, feet going everywhere. And the back of the hooves of your Tau crisis suit, you're going to see uh, they're not supported by anything. Look, it's a big old gape in the back there. Um, and when you try to put it down, like you try to settle it down, the back kind of flips back on you and, and then you just have a bad time. So I figured, hey, I got to stabilize uh, these feet. So how can I do it? And I'm like, duh, I use poster tack for a lot of different things. Like even now, this sucker is on poster tack and I could paint it and I could throw it around and do all kinds of stuff with it. And uh, I thought it would be a lot easier uh, if you are struggling with the same thing that I, maybe I can help you. And you know, this works for a lot of different miniatures as well, not just the Tau. So if you have uh, feet that are unstable and you really want a dynamic pose and you're kind of changing things up a little bit because you know, uh, you have three units of the same thing 
thing. And if you're like me, I get bored. I get bored. I have to change things up. Like it has to have like a, a stripe or a battle scar or rust or, or, or it has to have a different walking position or dynamic different poses and stuff like that. Every, every one of my miniatures are a unique flower. And when you're painting as many miniatures as I am um, and you have same, a lot of the same units, well, you got to change it up. You got it for me. I got to change it up. And hopefully uh, this tutorial helped you if you're ever frustrated with that so if you like this video like share comment and subscribe and we'll catch you next time on the miniatures paintbrush